Hi, I'm Mark Ayler for markayler.com and today we're going to apply some graduated filters inside of Lightroom's develop module. Uh, in this image of um, Princess Pia that I've captured in Port Melbourne, we have a small issue with uh, an overly bright sky and a very dark foreground. And so we're going to balance the exposure of the top part of the image with a lower portion of the image using these graduated filters. Uh, press M on the keyboard or click on the graduated filter icon uh, below the histogram there. And then if you've got any settings already applied into uh, this um, onto these sliders here just simply double clicking the word effect will zero them all. Now I am going to pick a negative exposure value perhaps a one and two third of a stop and then click uh, in the sky hold down the shift key while you drag your mouse down to apply the graduated filter. Now normally you don't want this um, uh, transition to be too short otherwise the graduated filter will be noticeable. Okay, uh, we're not restricted just to one single adjustment and I can actually also vary this. So if I just want this a little bit stronger, I can bring that down a little bit more. I can also add in adjustments from the other sliders. For instance, if I want to increase the saturation, I could just bump that up. And so now we've got two adjustments uh, via this graduated filter. Now if I wanted the sky to be a little bit darker at the top, I could just click away from this graduated filter, click down and drag a second graduated filter. And again, if it's running a little bit crooked, just hold down the shift key in order to snap that uh, to a perfect horizontal. That's a little bit strong, so I'm just going to back that up. Um, just to a very uh, minor adjustment at that top of the image there. And the saturation is also a little bit strong, so I'm just going to double click that slider um, to back the saturation off. Okay, so um, we've got two adjustments, uh, graduated filters now into the sky, but I'm also going to brighten up that foreground. Now I'm going to click uh, on the word new, which is also a way of disabling uh, the activity of the active pin there. Okay, both of these pins will now be inactive. If you did want to return and make some adjustments to one of these graduated filters, just come and click on that graduated filter and you're going to be able to see the settings associated with that particular graduated filter, which are obviously different from the settings that are used on the second graduated filter. However, I'm going to click New. I'm going to double click the word effect. This time I'm going to come up a little bit in exposure, just a third of a stop, and also raise that shadow slider uh, just to um, bring up okay, um, the brightness of those dark shadow tones in the lower portion of that image. Okay, now it's a little bit green for me, so I'm just going to adjust the color balance of this lower graduated filter. I'll just grab that tint slider and move that to the right slightly just to put a little bit of magenta into that foreground. Okay, and once you've finished with those graduated filters, um, then you can simply uh, click on the graduated filter icon a second time and we're back into the um, basic panel. Okay, now um, once you've added graduated filters, you may want to come and uh, fine tune your whites and blacks uh, because the brightest uh, portion of the image has been darkened significantly. And you'll see there's a little bit of a gap now uh, from the right side of that histogram uh, over to that white point there. So I'm just going to hold down the shift key and double click the whites in order to um, increase the uh, brightness or dynamic range of this image and I'm going to do the same thing with the black slider uh, just to get um, the, using the maximum uh, width of that histogram and that basically shows you how advantageous applying um, uh, graduated filters can be in balancing the exposure of an image. Let's just move forward uh, one image. I've got another image I'd like to show you here that's also had graduated filters applied. Now I'll click on the graduated filter icon again and you'll see that uh, I have a single pin this time and if I just click on that pin, it's a little bit crooked, I'll just straighten that up a little bit just by dragging on the, uh, out, on the center 
line there you can actually adjust the angle of that graduated filter and you can see that uh, although I have lowered the exposure by nearly one stop you'll also see that the temperature slider is giving me this beautiful transition uh, from blue to orange uh, just at sunset now without that color balance shift there uh, we're not going to get that blue now that blue I was actually seeing as a photographer but I'm just shooting slightly underneath that blue transition uh, with this slight telephoto lens that I'm using so I'm just going to um, accentuate that blue transition uh, just by pulling that temperature slider down Okay, so not only can we use these uh, graduated filters for exposure, uh, but also for uh, white balance. Okay, so let's just click off that graduated filter and uh, moving forward to another image here. Uh, just wait for this to um, uh, pull sharpness uh, on this image. Okay, and there it comes in now. Okay, again, I'll come over to the graduated filters. You'll see that I've got um, four pins associated to four graduated filters. Uh, on this uh, lower one, you'll see that I'm lowering the exposure uh, of the water here, just uh, acting as a sort of an exposure bookend top and bottom, uh, so the eyes led in towards that central portion of the image. Um, you'll see that this um, uh, also this graduated filter at the top is using the um, uh, both the lowering of the exposure increasing of the saturation and also lowering that color temperature again without that color temperature shift we're basically going to have uh, just a, um, a straight orange gradient there so bringing that temperature slider again will give me that nice uh, transition uh, from a cooler uh, color through to that orange there uh, what I wanted to show you this particular image however is uh, this particular pin here this pin is lowering the exposure um, but also raising the shadows now I'm just going to double click on the shadows uh, so you can see what will happen without that shadows adjustment uh, and this is something that is actually um, better to do in post-production rather than using a graduated neutral density filter in front of a camera lens because these graduated neutral density filters will lower the exposure of everything that includes a bright sky but also some of the detail um, that is uh, um, reaching up into that sky such as uh, the spirit of Tasmania this ship here and also this beacon here uh, and I want to try and preserve um, the, um, the detail um, or information into those shadow areas. So as well as lowering exposure, as you can see here, we are lowering the exposure of the sky quite well there. But I can then open up the shadows, restoring the tonality of both the ship and also the beacon. So you can see how advantageous uh, that actually is. Another way of removing um, um, part of the graduated filter is to click on the brush tool here. Now we can actually paint in uh, with these settings or remove these settings. So if I wanted to remove these settings, I'd hold down the Alt or Option key. I'm just going to increase the size of that brush. And now I can actually remove areas of that graduated filter. Typically, I'd be working up here in here, but uh, you can see that the shadows slider has done a very good job there. Uh, but you could also, um, for instance, remove any of the adjustment anywhere else in that image. And as you can see from uh, that adjustment uh, stroke that I made there and obviously I'm happy with that adjustment so I'll just uh, undo that adjustment um, to re restore the tonality of this image so um, one you can see the uh, advantage of using graduated filters but also you can see the increased uh, advantage of using graduated filters in post-production compared to using them in front of a camera lens Okay, with uh, modern full frame sensors, we certainly do have a, a better advantage. Um, having a broader dynamic range means that we're less likely to clip those highlight tones. So we're less likely to have to need to use a graduated filter in camera. Okay, uh, one more adjust, um, image that I could uh, show you. So I'll just um, come out of the... Um, 
graduated filter and moving forward just one image you'll see that uh, I have an image of um, a Millennium Bridge here now you've seen that I've been adjusting um, color balance using graduated filters in the sky but we can also do this uh, in the foreground uh, to show you an example here is I've got this graduated filter it's um, it's lowering the exposure but instead of making this cooler this time it's making the um, foreground water this gives us the um, effect that we're actually reflecting the warmth the natural warmth that is in the sky here and without that um, color balance shift you'll see that there the wet paving stones they've got a little bit of warmth but a lot of that warmth is getting lost into those shadows so just pushing that warmth uh, a little bit more uh, to echo the warmth in the sky okay so hopefully you found uh, that information about graduated filters useful uh, give me a thumbs up below if you have and uh, I'm Mark Ayler for markayler.com